In 22, the M11 showed us what the future of digital rangefinders would look like. In 23, we witnessed the Q3 push the boundaries of a companion camera. And now in 2024, we get to witness what happens when Leica sets out to build their best full frame camera to date. This is the Leica SL3, and it ushers in the next generation of the SL system. It sports a 60 megapixel backside illuminated full frame sensor with triple resolution support like the one you'd find in the Leica M11 and can deliver images with up to 15 stops of dynamic range. It houses the new Maestro 4 processor with l Square technology, a series of innovations from the partnership between Leica and Lumix to improve many points of the functionality, including a new phase detect autofocus system. The camera also moves to the pairing of a CF Express Type-B and SD UHS-2 card slots, which improves the capture and download performance. There's an entirely new menu system, which caught me by surprise because this never felt like a weak point for this system. And there's also a brand new battery with higher capacity that should improve performance, but also take advantage of these brand new video features, which includes 8K recording. Now that's already a lot. And if this was several other brands, that would be it. But this is Leica and there's still so much more. Two weeks ago, a handful of us were invited to Wetzlar, where we got access to cameras, photographers, designers, and engineers to really learn the intricacies of the Leica SL3. In this first impressions, I'm gonna share with you all that's new, along with some insights from those that are close to the launch of this camera. In my experience, I actually really love this new body. I feel like the hand grip is a little more well-balanced. The body's a touch smaller, but you actually notice the difference when, between this and the SL2. So it feels more comfortable in the hand with the addition of the tilt screen. It's actually kind of eliminated any boundaries that the SL2 might have had. For example, this project that I'm working on now, tentatively called Natives, wouldn't have been possible without this tilt screen. A lot of time I'm shooting very low on the floor with this camera, so it allows me to capture things that are only less than a foot off the ground, you know, and without a tilt screen, which seems like something that there would probably be a little bit of um, controversy that like is putting on some of their cameras. It actually ends up being a benefit. Jason is one of the launch ambassadors for the Leica SL3 and he produced probably the most incredible set of images of pigeons that I've ever seen. And having been close to this launch, I got to really witness how the upgrades of this camera aided him in bringing this project to life. The Leica SL3 is noticeably smaller and lighter than the predecessor. Even though it has a full metal housing, it's only 738 grams now, and still manages to give you that deep grip where it can accommodate all your fingers. The camera has an IP54 rating, which means that you can use it in all sorts of crazy weather conditions. It's rated from minus 10 to plus 40 degrees Celsius, but what I really appreciated is that this camera, it's tested from minus 40 to plus 70 degrees which also happens to mimic the range of emotions that you'll feel as a freelance photographer. The new layout of this camera moves most of the buttons to the operator side of the camera, which makes it a lot easier to use with one hand. There's also now a third command dial, along with six customizable function buttons. And as you would expect, there's no markers, there's no labels, which just results in this very clean, sleek look. Moving to the back, we now see a two-way tilting LCD, and while a flush design would look nicer, I have to admit that the raised profile, it makes for an easier way to engage the display from different angles. This upgrade has been a long time coming and makes it easier for video operation as well as low angle photography. The touchscreen on the 3.2 inch back LCD is very responsive and very accurate as well. Moving to the viewfinder, it's the same 5.76 million dot viewfinder that you'd see in the previous version of the camera and has a refresh rate of 120 frames per second. And like I mentioned in my Leica SL2S review, it's really, really good. You also have a 1.28 inch monochrome top display to view your settings. And this has been tweaked a little bit, so certain things are a little bit more legible than before. There's a new power button on the back of the camera, and this had a few of us feeling a little hesitant. Because in the past, you just had a switch and you would know if the camera's on or off. But like us promising more functionality that should benefit the end user. With this power switch, it can indicate charging status, it can operate as a tally light, and even allows for remote power control. 
You know, this is a feature, a shift that reminds me, well, say my son, he came home in an absolute mess. And just as I was about to grill him, he proceeds to tell me that he single-handedly saved a bus full of puppies. This is all to say that as much as many of us were looking to harp on this change from a switch to a button, it seems like there's a lot of benefits that are gonna be coming out of this. But I'll save my final thoughts for the full review. When it comes to ports on the Leica SL3, you have full-size HDMI, USB-C, microphone in, audio out, and even a time code interface, which should indicate that, you know, Leica is getting quite serious about video production on their SL platform. Another benefit with the USB-C port is that you can now directly plug your camera into your computer and engage a mass storage mode so it just shows up as a drive for you to drag and drop your files. And this should be useful in those instances that you don't have a CF Express card reader with you. And before I forget, the battery, it's the same size as before and you can even use the older ones, but if you want to use all the functionality, well, it uses the new battery that was introduced with the Leica Q3, which has higher capacity and should allow you to power your creativity for longer or your secret OnlyFans account. With respect to connectivity, you have a brand new Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chip, which should make file transfers and remote control much, much faster. Now, I've covered all the major hardware changes around the camera, but let's move on to something that no one predicted. We took what is kind of like core values of Leica, which is focus on the essential and really try to, what we do in hardware, trying to get rid of things that customers actually don't need. So we came up kind of with principles for our Leica user experience design, which is simple, intuitive, coherent, and try really bring that in a new Leica user experience. This is also why we started actually with a redesign of the Leicons, how we call it, the new Leica icon set, is we've seen that there are inconsistencies and it makes it significantly better if we would redesign all the icons. This is why two uh, years ago we decided let's do this for the SR3 and redesign first the whole icon set and then really consider what can we improve and improve in really simple, intuitive and coherent and bring it actually to the next level. The design team has introduced an all new user interface and menu system. We now have something that has far more uniformity with the icons, improved legibility with the text, and generous spacing for touch control. The main control center is more refined and now has eight customizable tiles that can really make this feel like your camera. What I loved about this redesign is all the small things that just made the experience better like removing the black bar at the bottom so you can really see your composition, or holding down an icon in the LCD to change a setting, or improvements to deleting multiple files. Seriously, I was a little nervous when I heard that this was being changed because again, it was already really good and in my eyes, industry leading in terms of how intuitive and simple it was. But after talking to the designers and spending a lot of time with this thing, well, it looks like this is just designed for the future. You can have up to six customizable profiles for photo and for video. And what Leica is saying is that they're hoping users will go in, craft these profiles, and spend less time in the menus. You just choose what you need for the job ahead of you. Oh, and speaking of video, I was curious why they had this yellow accent in the menu when you switch to video. Well, this is just a callback to their light cine products. And you know, looking at it, it's a nice touch. And I know some of you might be wondering, you know, do I like this menu system better than the previous one? And if I had to answer that, I think I want to say yes, but the reality is I need more time with it, right? When it comes to the previous menu system, I've been using it for years, right? I developed a lot of muscle memory around this. I've used it behind the scenes at massive outdoor concerts for photography. I've used it on the back of a motorbike for video, and I've used it in stressful situations under the cover of darkness with high stakes on the line. So time will tell whether or not this new user interface design will lead to a better user experience. But what gives me hope is how hungry the design team is to collect feedback 
and refine this menu system to, to make it better over time. You know, even in our time there, they were already grabbing as many ideas as they could to start implementing in, in beta situations to test out. And, and that does give some promise. Before I go into some of the camera features, I gotta talk about the glass because with the L mount of this lens, Users have access to well over 80 lenses from eight different manufacturers, and that's before you even look at adapting M lenses. The most impressive are these Apple Prime lenses designed for the SL. These are lenses that are designed to resolve images on a sensor well over 100 megapixels. It really is sort of the best glass coming out of Wetzler. And there's this notion that with L mount or with the SL, there isn't a lot of lens choices. Well, the truth is far from that. Now let's dive into the photo features. The sensor is essentially the Leica M11 sensor tweaked for the SL system. And with the move to a Maestro 4 processor, you can expect up to 15 stops of dynamic range, better noise reduction, and native ISO that ranges from 100 to 100,000. There's an upgrade to a phase detect autofocus system. And this thing, it works significantly better than the Leica SL2 and Leica SL2S. I'm gonna save my final thoughts for the review, but in our testing, while we were there, it showed far less hesitation when you had multiple subjects than the Q3 did at launch. You also have a mechanical shutter that can fire up to an 8,000th of a second, which should allow you to capture a wild toddler at full speed. And for studio shooters, the flash sync goes up to one over 200, which is not the best in the industry, but better than most. When it comes to continuous shooting, with the 60 megapixel sensor, you can go as fast as 15 frames per second. Now, if you're like me and you're wondering, what if I wanna get the best quality file with continuous autofocus, that goes down to four frames per second, which is good for studio, but won't cut it for sports or wildlife. What I did appreciate though, is that the buffer size has been doubled to eight gigabytes, which should allow you to burst for longer. It's something that people will benefit from. When it comes to video, there is now 8K at 30P or 4K at 60P, and there's a ton of cinema modes in this camera that really make filmmaking easy. You have waveforms, you have shutter angle, you have time code options like I mentioned before. You have the ability to load your own LUTs or use the Leica LUTs that are provided. There is a ton that makes this a very robust video making tool. And another thing I'll mention, the backside illuminated sensor now supports a dual native ISO, which should give users two different ISO readings to use in the field to get the best dynamic range possible. I'm very curious to see how this translates to filmmakers in the field. Taking a step back, you gotta appreciate how much work went into reinventing this camera. Where some companies might introduce one new part or a new sensor, Leica has completely redesigned their offering for this product category. It's truly impressive, but it's also positioned in a unique place in the market because of how and where it's made. So with that in mind, who should be most excited for this camera? Today, cameras, take every brand, every market, uh, our competitors, uh, if we have competitors, uh, uh, all Japanese brands do incredibly good cameras. They do very good cameras. And uh, the, the, the technology in photography has reached a plateau where you cannot, I mean, once you have 60 million pixels in a camera and 20, 30, 200 focus points uh, and 30 frames per second, and what can you put more in a camera today to, to make it better for the people? Nothing. Maybe you have to start taking away something, which means that uh, in doing this camera, we have not concentrated on features. Yes, it's on par with everything else that is on the market. It's, it's, uh, this camera has the state of the art of the features that in 2024, the photographic market can, uh, can offer you. What is different in this camera that has been made thinking to the people that has to use it. So the user experience is what is fundamental in this camera. When you factor in the electronic viewfinder, the durable housing, the upgraded autofocus system, the versatile lens mount, and the robust video features, 
The Leica SL3 feels like the best full frame Leica on the market, if we're defining best in a very general way. But the reality is that these features, these offerings, they don't mean anything if you don't know how to leverage them for your work. When I got my Leica M11, I didn't think that an SL2S would be the next camera to round out my kit. But after months of research and testing, it turned out that this ecosystem provided a greater opportunity for growth. It paired perfectly for the work that I do, whether it was commercial, documentary, video, or personal, it was an ecosystem that I can count on time and time again. I could leverage the key differentiators to get the most from my creativity. With all that said, I am more optimistic about the Leica SL3 than most of the cameras that I've been test driving lately, and that's largely because there's a personal element here. I can see more clearly how some of these updates and features are going to translate into a better experience for the work that I do. One thing I know for sure though, is test driving this camera for some of the adventures that we have planned, it's gonna make for one hell of a review. For those of you that made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. With these first impressions, as most of you know, but I'll say it for those that are unfamiliar, you know, we're trying to give you an overview of what this new product can do, what you should be excited about, what I'm excited about, and really what we're looking to test and figure out together. This one was a little bit different because I felt more like a journalist than a photographer, where normally I would get a camera and we build out a creative. Here, we were going to you know home base, we were getting educated, we were getting testing time, and we were getting collaborative conversations with other journalists and photographers and media members. Um, so it felt a little bit different and it gave us a little bit more insight than what we'd normally have when we have a camera sent to us. And that made for a different video that you're watching right now. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought of this whole thing. I'm very curious how you guys, those of you that have made it to the end, how you receive this video. And before I forget, make sure to leave a, leave a comment with your favorite food emoji so I know who you are, for those of you that have made it this far. And I'll also say the eggplant doesn't have to be your first choice. If you're wondering you know, if you wanna see the full first impressions and more of the visuals and the photos, you can visit the photo club as usual. I'll leave a pinned comment and you can see that all there. As always, my name's Gadgen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.